this incredible assessment on why the bank happened. I I hope he talks about how it's woke culture. Sure, that's the reason why. Second it biggest bank meltdown of all time actually took place over the course of the last seventy two hours. Some problems on their hands on, on their own that would include for example first republic apparently has similar issues to svb so we're going to go through exactly what happened with svp why it shut down and we'll talk about whether there's a system-wide banking issue the first thing to understand is that the reason for all of this is federal government mismanagement the reason for all of this is because the federal government blew it on inflation and then had to ramp up the interest rates in order to fight the inflation According to the Wall Street Journal, SVB by Financial is the parent company of Silicon Valley Bank, which counts many startups and venture capital firms as clients. So this means that a lot of people are sort of laughing today because look at all the big tech bros who are about to go under. Now, here's the reality. What's actually going to happen is the federal government is going to bail out the depositors, meaning that all of the people who had their money invested in Silicon Valley Bank, everybody who took their money and put it in Silicon Valley Bank and left it there, and then they would take swing loans in order to pay their staff. All those people will be fine. It's the bank itself that is going to shut down. This does mean the federal government is violating its own rules. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is supposed to give you back $250,000 of your deposits, right? This is every time you go to the bank, you'll see there's like a little sign on the bank teller window that will say FDIC insured up to $250,000. Well, most people who are running companies keep a lot more than $250,000 there. The FDIC is going to fill in all of those people anyway. This does create a situation of moral hazard. But what happened here is that SVP Financial, they had about $200 billion in total deposits by the end of the first quarter of 2022. That was a major increase in the amount of money that they had in deposits from the first quarter of 2020. In 2020, they had $60 billion in deposits. By 2022, they had $200 billion. Why? Well, because between 20 and 2022, we injected more money into the American economy than any time in human history. We just shoveled money out the door. And a lot of that money went to the big tech companies. A lot of that money went to firms that didn't know where to put the money. And so they started shoveling it to tech. Because remember, that was a tech boom. It was really a tech bubble. It was very reminiscent of the dot-com bubble of 1999, 2000, where all of a sudden firms that, that really should not have been valued at the valuation that they were being provided were suddenly being valued at extraordinary prices because people had money just gushing out of their pockets. Like, what am I going to do with this? Pets.com. I can go take my, my money and I can put it in some weird venture capital attempt and I can just throw the money at it because what else am I going to do with this money? And so you can't say this and then simultaneously act like capitalism is a decent system, right? Like he's quite literally describing he's quite literally describing like what is fundamentally flawed with the way that like the modern stock market works. What is fundamentally wrong with like uh, high earning sectors and the overvaluation that happens in said sectors. He's talking about rich people not being productive, uh, not being actual uh, producers, right? And cycling money. And then he's going to turn around and what? Say that it's like actually not deregulated enough? Like, I don't understand. Like, this, if it wasn't Ben Shapiro that was saying this shit, you would look at this and go, oh, okay, another based anti, uh, another based anti-capitalist uh, YouTuber. Of course, who knows where he is going to uh, take this video? Well, I have an idea. He's probably going to say that it's regulation that caused this bank to, to go into uh, government bonds. I guess it would be better if they if they were left to their own devices or something. I don't fucking know. He'll say that they're too woke. There was one gay and one black person in the board. He'll probably show a YouTube video I saw swirling around the interwebs about like one dumbass marketing initiative that they did. Two vets. Um, he already blamed on, on the pandemic spending. All of those companies then took their money and they put it in Silicon Valley Bank. And so you saw the balance sheet expand dramatically for Silicon Valley Bank Financial. This created a question for Silicon Valley Bank because the way the banks actually make money, they don't keep your money in a lockbox. And it's not like you have a safety deposit box and you bring in your million dollars and they take it in cash and they shove it into the wall or something. That's not what they do. 
Instead, it's all digital. And what they do is they then lend out the money to other possible ventures, or they go and they buy bonds, or they go and they buy stocks. They and of course, there's nothing wrong with this process. Because Ben defends it, remember. He just thinks it's bad in this one instance because everyone's clowning on SVB. Invest the money themselves, and then they essentially arbitrage the difference between what they have in their coffers and what they owe back to you and what they think they can earn from the market. So what exactly did SVB Financial do with this massive influx of cash? Well, they started buying tens of billions of dollars of seemingly safe assets, primarily long-term U.S. Treasuries and government-backed mortgage securities, which means that SVP Securities portfolio rose from about $27 billion in the first quarter of 2020 to $128 billion by the end of 2021. Okay, so they took all that money that was being thrown out there by the federal government, this inflationary wave by the federal government, they took all that money and they shoved it back into U.S. Treasuries. Well, normally U.S. Treasuries are supposed to be pretty safe, right? I mean, the way the U.S. Treasury works is that you take 950 bucks, you invest it in a $1,000 bond, and that $1,000 bond is supposed to come to maturity in, say, 10 years. And that means that your rate of return on the $1,000 bond is, you know, a few percentage points. And that's fairly safe because you know you're going to get that money back. The problem is, if the interest rates dramatically increase, then the value of your bond drops really dramatically. Because let's say that you buy a bond and that bond is going to give you a, a yield of, of 4%. And then suddenly, there is an interest rate increase. And so the government is issuing bonds at a much higher rate. Well, then the market for your bond, which is going to earn you a much lower rate, the market just disappears. Suddenly, your bond is worth like nothing. Because I can go down the street, I can get a brand new bond issued by the U.S. government that is going to earn me a much greater yield than the bond that you are now currently. You're going to have to sell your bond at discount to compete with the new bonds that are being issued by the federal government. This is why when interest rates increase, the prices of bonds that are currently on the market tend to drop. So what happened here is that SBV Financial thought that they were being safe by buying a bunch of U.S. Treasuries, but they were being stupid because... Everything he said is correct so far. Like, literally no notes, for the record. I just want to make something clear. When he's describing the situation... No matter what his background and no matter what his perspective on, like, why this failure happened, as long as he's just describing the situation, he's correct. Okay. Not really? No. What do, what do you mean, not really? He's not wrong. No, he's, he's describing exactly what happened. The problem is... He has to find a way to say that this is somehow not the responsible party or this is somehow not capitalism. There's some other reason why this is happening. Okay? And if he was actually correct on the matter, he would say the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Glass-Steagall was repealed is what led to banks behaving in this uh, awful way this this uh, completely irresponsible way with your money if he was um if he was uh, uh you know honest about it he'd talk about dodd frank and how additional deregulation happened under the trump administration in 2018 for banks of this size that are like literally right underneath the the max limit like silicon valley bank is not a tiny bank by any margins but asset wise they technically were able to just hide right under that upper limit of, of big banks that would cause them to have more cash on hand, specifically to avoid this kind of thing from happening. Um, ultimately, though, uh, the, the, the thing is like they're buying they're buying government bonds, right? It's not like they're they're making these incredibly risky investments. I guess, I, I mean, you could, you could, uh, everybody knew that interest rates were going to go up. Uh, more importantly than anything else, they could have, uh, they could have hedged it adequately, uh, which they didn't. I don't know how they failed to understand that when I'm a fucking idiot and even I knew that that was coming. And, you know, even I bought a house with a mortgage before the interest rates went up. You know what I mean? If I know how the fuck do the Silicon Valley risk managers not re recognize that? I don't know. But ultimately, here's here's what's going on, okay? If if they had enough cash on hand, this wouldn't be an issue. They could just like they could they could sit back 
eat the losses and still pay out people when they need to, right? They could have done that. They could have done exactly that because it's just you're you know you're holding on uh, to these government bonds. Eventually, you can cash. Uh, you would be able to cash them out, but they didn't do that. Um, like if they had more assets and if they had more cash on hand, this would have never been an issue. But the fact that they were running low and uh, when Peter Thiel and a bunch of other uh, goons in Silicon Valley recognized that this was, uh, you know, this was, I guess, opportunity for a bank run to like just, you know, crash the Silicon Valley bank which you could technically, with enough power, I guess, kind of do to any other bank as well. Um, they did what they did, and then everyone in Silicon Valley started saying, oh my God, this bank is going under. If the government doesn't step in and do something about it, Everyone's going to pull out, and then this is going to uh, this is going to capsize the entire banking industry, which isn't incorrect. It's true, which is why the government had to step in and do something about it. That's the entire purpose of the FDIC. That's why they did it. It's not like that difficult of a concept to understand. What I do find uh, really funny and interesting is, of course, these rugged capitalists creating a system, designing the system to benefit themselves, and then routinely violating the, the, the bare minimum rules and regulations and restrictions that they are allowing the government to have, lobbying against, a <coughs> <coughs> lobbying against the government to like undermine what little regulation they already have, turning around and then uh, and, and, you know, begging the government to fucking bail them out, while simultaneously talking about the moral hazard every single time the government does that for poor people or for the broadest majority of uh, the public. No student loan debt relief. Fuck you. Even though literally student loan debts should not even exist in this country. Education should be at least free up until college, um, especially for certain sectors. That's like, you know, you're, you're literally educating your labor force. You're making a more... You are making or creating a more educated, more competitive labor force in the international market. Uh, it's totally valid to have it be free, including college. Uh, not education should be free up until college. Sorry. I, I meant education should be free, including college. Okay. Meanwhile, the very same people who have openly fucking cried about Biden and even lied about how student loan debt relief, it's going to be taxpayer-funded, 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 which was a lie, okay? Those fucking pieces of shit were like, come on, give us the money right now. Give us the money, give us the money, give us the money, give us the money. U.S. regulations are whack. Between 2001 and 2023, the U.S. endured 562 bank failures, according to the FDIC, plus the most recent SVB in Canada. That number is zero. They didn't look at the market and say, okay, wait, inflation is likely to follow here. And so when inflation follows, you're going to have to ramp up the interest rates. When they ramp up the interest rates, what is likely to follow is that the bond holdings that we have are going to drop in value. So if there's a run on the bank and all of our money is invested, all of their money, all of your money is invested in the bonds, we're going to have to sell off those bonds at a loss, and that's going to bankrupt the bank. That's essentially what happened here. We'll get to more of the explanation in just one moment. First, in this economic climate, pretty sketchy... Oh, God, he's going to do fucking... Ay, ay, ay. He has so many fucking ads. The problem is sell.com slash Shapiro. Again, according to the Wall Street Journal, they bought all of these securities. The problem emerged is that because they pay fixed interest rates for many years securities, that's not necessarily a problem unless the bank suddenly needs to sell the securities. Because market interest rates have moved so much higher, those securities are suddenly worth less on the open market. And they are valued at. Like, what's the take here? Inflation happened, so then the Fed had to raise interest rates, okay? Um, they, he's, like, blaming the bank for not hedging, right? Or not changing their tactics, which is fine. It's understandable. But then 
also simultaneously like what's what what are you supposed to do like there are there are deflationary mechanisms but you're completely against them like taxes you know what i mean so like what are you supposed to do in this situation if you're the if you're the government what are you supposed to do you're not going to talk about price checks right there is no shot it, it, you would ever, ever in a million fucking years allow the federal government to say, okay, we have so much, we have too much corporate consolidation in this goddamn country. And because of that, people can get away with pricing food and pricing commodities at whatever the fuck they want to price because there's no competition because all industries are basically oligopolies, firmly held oligopolies. So we're going to implement price checks. And we're going to tax you out the fucking ass if, uh, if you don't actually abide by price checks, right? So Ben would lose his mind if the federal government did that, which is deflationary. Because inflation ultimately is just that, right? It's prices going up. Ben would fucking lose his mind. He'd be like, this is communism. We need to fucking assassinate. We need to do a business plot is what he would be advocating for. So, you know, that's what, that's, that's what he would be saying. <laughs> but this time, not a failure. You know, business plot to electric boogaloo. So, so what is it then? At, on the bank's books. And as a result, they could only be sold as, as a loss. Right? That, that, that's what I was telling you. The, bo- the price on the bonds they had bought declined from when they had bought them because of the interest rate increases necessitated by the inflation. So as the Wall Street Journal says, at the same time, SVB's deposit inflows turned to outflows because clients were burning cash and they stopped getting new funds from public offerings or fundraising. So remember, all of their clients are tech companies. Those tech companies are very reliant on inflation. Those tech companies were... This part is true too, though. I mean, not relying on inflation, but like those tech companies basically operate with an unlimited... Uh, money supply up until recently that's what's really disruptive about the interest rate hike so far which is part of the reason why i I guess this this week they're not going to increase it marginally like they have been over and over again but that's it they were relying on free money i'm not even going to say cheap money i'm going to say free money you know what i mean that's it that's half of the american economy basically uh, realized that like you know free money is the only way to keep fucking uh, doing this permanent growth economy shit <laughs> yeah free sex and now that it's not free money anymore wait how do they have an unlimited money supply i mean we are america we are in the united states of america We technically kind of do have an unlimited money supply. You sure are agreeing a lot with Ben. I mean, I'm agreeing a lot so far because he's only described the situation and he hasn't even like put his own spin on it that much. Burning through cash at an extraordinary rate. For about two years there, if you were a if you were a company that was in search of public financial capital. You would just seek to get bought up by what was called an SPAC. You sought to be bought up by a publicly traded company that didn't have any content to it. It was basically just a slush fund, and then it would buy you, and then you would become the publicly traded company. Damn, he's coming after SPACs now. Oh, shit. We've seen a few of these. Truth Social was funded through a SPAC, for example. But when all the money dried up, then suddenly all of these companies came up short. They've been burning through cash at this extraordinary rate because there was so much cash flowing through the system. And then interest rates increased. People stopped spending money quite as much. All the investments dried up. And at that point, everybody started trying to draw down their balance at the bank. Again, they keep a certain amount of money at the bank, like what they have to by law, but then the rest of it is being lent out or bought or whatever. And so suddenly, if everybody goes to the bank at the same time, you have the Mary Poppins scenario, right? Give it back! Give me back the money! There's something wrong. The bank won't give someone their money. Everybody goes to the bank at the same time. It's a run on the bank. And everybody freaks out because they have to shut the windows. There actually is no money at the bank. On Thursday, customers tried to withdraw $42 billion of deposits, about a quarter of all of the money that was supposed to be held at the bank. And it just ran out of cash. And then other banks started to get hit because there were other banks that were invested in this bank. Stocks of other mid-sized lenders like First Republic Bank and Signature Bank were halted on Friday morning. And in fact, Signature Bank essentially went into receivership for the exact same reason. They were invested in Silicon Valley Bank, and also they were heavily invested in bonds. 
And so the question becomes, when retail investors lose millions because for any reason, Ben and every other capital says they knew the risks of their investment and should have taken rising interest rates into account. When the bankers lose billions of workers' life savings, Ben says the government's fall for rising interest rates. No, I don't think he's even saying that. He literally said the bank should have foreseen the interest rates increasing because of inflation. So, like, technically, he even, I'm, I'm not even, I'm a little shocked that he even basically said, that, uh, you know, interest rates were, of course, slated to increase because of inflation and the fact that they were not able, the fact that the bank was not able to foresee that and act accordingly was was uh, silly. It's true. Um, it's been nine minutes so far, and he still hasn't made the, the, the turn here about how the guys were gay, and that's why they did it. So I'm, I'm surprised. Okay, so what happens next? So that's two questions. Question number one is, are they going to bail out SVB? Are they going to bail out the depositors? How many other banks are in the vulnerable position? That S he said it was government failure at the start. Yeah, he said it was government failure, but uh, he already said his perspective on FDIC insurance, that it creates moral hazard for people to play with other people's money. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Like, I think it's understandable to have FDIC insurance, especially when you have some kind of system in place to also limit the amount of gambling that banks could play with people's money. Of course, Ben Shapiro and I differ on that. The FDIC, however, fucking however many years ago when it was first cooked up in a fucking shop by FDR was working fine because it also came with a bunch of additional rules and restrictions on what banks could do. Except we decided, you know, fuck the other part. We'll, we'll keep the FDIC and we'll allow banks to gamble. That's the problem. It was deregulation. That is the issue. The deregulation is the issue. Okay? Understand that both the... Democratic Party and the Republican Party has played a role in what happened. The FDIC is an acknowledgement that people are 100% going to fuck with people's money because the U.S. is so anti-regulation, it's just straight up a necessity. The idea that as long as the FDIC exists, the, the, the banks will make risky gambles with your money is a stupid one because it's a historic because the FDIC became a necessity after there were bank runs and the Great Depression. So it's not like Banks were waiting on an FDIC to make these kinds of <laughs> banks were not waiting for the FDIC to make risky bets with other people's money. N anyway, there's actually some interesting news here as well. Breaking, a group of Democrats led by Elizabeth Warren and Katie Porter are unveiling legislation today to restore to bank regulations that were undone in 2018. The bill would increase scrutiny on banks with assets of $50 billion to $250 billion. Let's see if that happens. Uh, good luck. Would you agree that SVB should get canned, not bailed out, and depositors should be credited? I mean, that's what they're doing right now. Um, they are The FDIC only protects the depositors. If you are a... If you're a shareholder, sucks to suck. If you are a uh, executive, sucks to suck. You no longer should have a job. You should never get hired in that sector ever again. You know what I mean? I, I don't have an issue with any of that. But yeah, if you're a depositor, it's not your fucking fault. You know what I mean? I know that like, look, look. I'll say it like this. I totally do understand that it's like all bullshit jobs and it's all bullshit fucking corporations. Like that one lady who was like doing events planning or something for six grand a month, right? 
You don't really believe that? What do you mean? A deposit is a loan? Dude, that is an insane assessment on banking in general. You are literally talking... You, what you're saying is like the entire system needs a rewrite and not even in a socialist way, but in like an anarcho-primitivist way where we just like somehow magically do not need uh, banks any longer. What the fuck? No, when you put your money, when you deposit your money with a bank, it's not a fucking loan, dog. It's not supposed to be a fucking loan. What are you saying? Do I have to go back to currency? Back in the day, when we were fucking cavemen and hunters and gatherer, gatherers, we would barter with one another, and then we decided that there needed to be an exchange rate. Like, there needed to be something that you could point to that had value internally, that was a shiny object, maybe, that you could point to and say, this is worth this many breads, okay? So when that happened, you fucking had to put that somewhere. Okay, you had to hold it somewhere because if you put it under your fucking pillow, someone could come and take it. Okay. Oh my lord. It's ridiculous. You're like There is a, there is going to still, there is going to be a need for banks in the way that the current system is designed. Okay. That's why it, it, it is, you know, before capitalism, before capital, before uh, capitalism, there were still some kind of banks, something that held your, your money. Maybe it wasn't for every single person, especially if you were a fucking serf, but you know. So we, we, you know. As long as uh, commodity production exists and we have a network, like a, a network that spans globally for said uh, endeavors, and as long as trade continues, you, 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 you know, you kind of have to point to something to make it easier for people to trade with one another, goods and services, commodities. Bartering came after currency. Prior to that, we just had mutual debts, according to David Graeber. Regardless, when people say, you're wrong, credit came before barter and coinage, read debt 5,000 years, it still doesn't change what I am trying to describe to you, which is that, yeah, we don't have IOUs, okay? Like, the fuck do you mean? We're pointing at something. We do. That's debt. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my money. I'm going to lose my mind and lose my money. Keep your money in the safest place possible. Your ass. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my money. No, I'm fucking reading chat. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I told my bank my interest rate is 20% and they still haven't paid me it. Yeah, it's fucked up. Depositors choose not to diversify their accounts so they can get 0% mortgages. Yeah, listen, that's like, that's Sam Cedar's uh, approach. And I'm sure there's some truth to it. You get like favorable service or whatever from SVB. I don't know. But like in many instances, I think people are just not even thinking about it. It's just like ease of access to one account. Especially if you're not banking with SVB, but instead with, like, one of the big ones.
Anyway. If I'm not mistaken, banks were critical in winning many wars. Nations needed to be able to take loans and go into debt to sustain long wars. Yeah. Okay, look. Ultimately, you need to ultimately you need to make sure that like when you give your money to a fucking bank, no offense, but most people with that much money know these things. They didn't get it all at once like a Twitch streamer. I mean, sure. But you have to remember that like a lot of these are literally just fucking businesses, right? And they might be businesses that are creating shitty products, which, you know, and a lot of them are. It's like the fucking party planner that was talking about her business, right? But ultimately, the principle of, like, a bank it needs to be able to defend or a bank needs to not be so insecure in order for people to not lose confidence in the banking system across the board, that's the reason why the FDIC exists, and that's precisely why the government stepped in, as they always were going to, it does not matter because no one is looking at it and going, well, these were shitty businesses, so the workers that work at those businesses shouldn't even get fucking payroll. Fuck them because the bank decided to, to make risky trades or not even risky trades, but the bank didn't foresee interest rates uh, increasing and didn't have enough cash on hand uh, in, in, the, uh, in the possible unforeseeable bank run. You know? Like, that's stupid. That's, a, that's not a, a, a smart assessment. SVB was in. How many banks are not telling you they're in that vulnerable position? And nobody really knows the answer to that. So there's a lot of unease in the markets today because even if the depositors of Silicon Valley Bank are bailed out. You said so the banks operate by trust? Brother, everything operates by trust. This entire system that keeps having these weird cycles of failure that are premeditated and created by the inherent contradictions that are designed into the system that uh, that, that constantly keep happening all the time are literally held together by ticker tape, okay? It's held together by the small string of confidence. That's it. And if people start losing confidence in the entire system, nothing will fucking work. Yes, it's all confidence. That's it. It's backed by the confidence that people instill in the United States government and its military might, for the most part. Okay? Well, what happens to all the unsecured credit holders in Silicon Valley Bank? And there are a lot of people, in other words, who invested in Silicon Valley Bank. They're not going to get their money out. Now, that money is now gone. And Silicon Valley Bank was a big concern. So that means those people are going to lose a lot of money, which means they can't hire. It means they can't fire. It means they can't, like, they're, they're bankrupt. Right? I mean, it can bankrupt a lot, a lot of people. And so we are in the same situation, financially speaking, that we were during 2007, 2008, when you had a bunch of financial institutions who are tacitly relying on the promise that the federal government was going to fill them in to make risky bets. And then those bets fail. And then the federal government does indeed at least fill in the depositors. Now, they're not going to save Silicon Valley Bank here. Silicon Valley Bank will not be a going concern from here on out unless there is somebody who comes in, sweeps in, and actually buys up the assets. Now, that could have been done on the open market anyway, right? There could have been Elon Musk talked about buying up Silicon Valley Bank, for example, and then going... With whose money, motherfucker? What do you mean he's going to buy up Silicon Valley? Elon Musk can barely afford a fucking $5 a month subscription at the top of the hour to avoid the top of the hour ad break, and he's out here talking about fucking buying up silicon valley bank oh my god i can't wait for him to run that shit into the fucking ground too holy fuck anyway if you no longer want to be destroyed by the top of the hour ad break which comes at the top of every hour which is a three minute ad break all you need to do is subscribe which you could do for five dollars or for free with a twitch prime by connecting your amazon prime account to your twitch account where you get one free prime subscription a month you can also get gifted a sub okay there you go there it is. Bill Vogg and Bats Rats. Thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Think of it like a bailout. And, and finding investors to fill in what depositors were owed. Because it's not like Silicon Valley Bank had no money. It's not like they went from $200 billion in holdings Brian to $0 Miller, thank you for the five in gifted. holdings. They still were able to liquidate 
some of the bonds that they had on the market. They would need somebody to come in and buy them up and, and fill it back in, and people would presumably continue to invest in Silicon Valley Bank once they realized that the run was... Yeah, that's why they were trying to sell it. That's why they were trying to, they were trying to very quickly, hastily, in order to avoid the fucking bank run, try to, try to you know, raise funds. That's what they wanted to do. Holy fuck. I got a 9.48 on that. That's like one of the highest, dude. That is a record breaking rating on that on the Hassan Abbey broadcast. Let's fucking go. It was over. But that's not what the federal government did. So the federal government had basically two concerns here. Concern number one is making sure that this thing did not spread directly from Silicon Valley Bank to the rest of the system. That there wasn't a meltdown where depositors lost their money and so everybody across the system went, hold up a second. My money is not safe at my bank. I'm going to go do a run on the bank right now. And because there is a sort of herd mentality when it comes to this stuff, is my bank safe? Are they doing the same thing? Are they lying to me? And everybody goes get their money at the same time and suddenly a lot of banks start to go under. The other is the moral hazard created by the simple fact that over and over and over. I mean... Yeah, if you're in the business of, like, fucking screaming about a moral hazard, then I guess it's uh, more viable or more understandable to fucking talk about a moral hazard when it's in this circumstance and not for the fucking working poor, I guess. But ultimately, the reality is, or the problem is capitalism. The problem is that these banks behave this way before the moral hazard of the FDIC. I'm sorry, you're fucking ridiculous. Okay. This literally happened before this. The reason why the FDIC exists is because this quite literally happened. Okay. It happened. That's why the FDIC exists. So the notion that like, oh, this is creating a moral hazard, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, well, even without it, there was a moral hazard. The real issue is the, that regulation that accompanied the FDIC. Hassan is the biggest capitalist. Fuck yeah, baby. Dog ass RIP ads. I am. I love capitalism. That's why I'm literally defending the FDIC. I'm defending the banking system. You know what I mean? The FDIC wasn't just along, uh, alone. There were additional regulations that came along with it. Those regulations were, uh, of course, deregulated away. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Over again, the federal government keeps doing things and people keep relying on the federal government to fill in the gap. In 2007, 2008, the presumption was for everybody who was invested in subprime mortgages that the federal government was going to back their play because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which were quasi-government subsidized, they were backing that play. In 2007, 2008, the smart money was that the federal government was backing subprime mortgages. So what's the big deal if we mix in a bunch of crap subprime mortgages with actually like good mortgages and then we mix it all together, create a a credit derivative structure that, that allows us to create a crap sandwich and then everybody eats the crap sandwich, but most of the sandwich is not crap, so it's probably okay. Well, as it turns out, the federal government stepped in to save everybody from their own stupidity in relying on the federal government. Same sort of thing here. All of these companies relied on the federal government not to. Yeah, I mean, he's so right. That's why. Because uh, people are relying on the federal government to bail them out. That's why they behave this way, totally. But except like, uh, you know, how did it happen before the federal government had any kind of protective measures in place then? Why did it happen before then? Hmm. I wonder if the very same system that those guys were operating under is the exact same system that we're under it, uh, operating under. And that's precisely why uh, dickheads like you that fucking advocate for deregulation are regularly making things worse. And then talking about uh, some of the outcomes of, of uh, deregulation openly and then trying to still find a way to like blame the government on it the orthodox view in 08 wasn't that the feds would bail people out you raise those interest rates to dramatic levels that's exactly what happened with svp they said yeah we can see that you're inflating the currency but we were we'll bet that you're not going to raise those interest rates to high levels even as jerome powell was saying we probably will and then of course things went out and now they're going to get bailed out by the federal government, at least the depositors are, and it's a question as to how many other institutions are going to be guaranteed that way, which raises the question as to if depositors are just getting bailed out by the FDIC, then why exactly is the federal government subsidizing 
a bunch of banks in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Why not own it? Ben Shapiro said there should be public banks. That's what he's saying, dude. You, you understand? Because, like, that's, that's it. That's the takeaway, right? Like, that's what he's saying. I, I assume. No notes. No notes. Place to engage in investments they would not make with their own money. Because that's really what you're talking about here. He said that. He said that when the government comes in and handles your bank and takes over, it's public bank now. That's what he's saying, I think. Well, he didn't really say anything. That's the hilarious part about this, is that he quite literally just described the situation and, like, briefly alluded to how it was the, the government's Goodbye. fault. But no.